something to accommodate more, more souls. souls. But they are criticizing our biggest church, all these pastors. Now, if he's, if, he's, if he's there to chop the money, if it is about the money, what will he build that? that kind of, when everything, I, I, I read the man of God's um, story and he was talking about when economic recession hit the country, mm -hmm. everything changed. They were ordering things at 191 uh, naira per dollar. Calling it the there for the money. An mm. order. Ah. Yeah, like what we did here. Somebody will say, ah, oh, this is Nigeria. Mm. So I couldn't have taken this money to Port and gone to, to, to Port Harcourt in, Port, in Nigeria. It's amazing, sir, because uh, you know, we find, we find that nowadays people are concerned about what people are doing. Like, for instance, this past two weeks has been amazing in the church. And one deliverance that touched me on the, uh, last past Sunday, it's one of the ushers. I won't mention her name. Yeah. I, I was in tears. I'm like, God, what are you doing? <laughs> it was out of this world. And it's showing that we as Christians, we can walk and walk, live daily, not knowing mm, mm. who is following us. Yes. Mm. That we do yeah. it's because of the strong man, the external strong man, who's manifesting in without and telling us things. And you know what I saw on Sunday? I was like, my goodness. And as the lady, as the demon kept on manifesting, I was like, Jesus, what is this? I'm telling you. It was so strong. And the atmosphere changed altogether. And I was like, what is this? Wow. And I was like, I wish people can see this. Are people learning? Are we learning what is happening? Because this is an Asha. Or oh, I'm a choir I member coming every Sunday, hmm. not knowing who that is the strong man is that dealing the strong with you. Man is dealing and it's not visible in your eyes. Visible. Nobody sees him. Hmm. What is talking? The moment you said, someone is talking to me. Someone is talking to me. I saw something change. And the moment you confronted, you also changed. You were not even here. <laughs> you, when you confronted the man, you can see that the man was angry. So angry. So angry. The way the demon was manifesting, I was like, I've never seen this before. Wow. I was like, what is, what is going on? What is happening? And I started praying right then. I said, Lord, if there's any strong man, whether I may use it directly, <laughs> let it come out. Because it's things like this. You're like, my goodness, what is going on? And here we are. What we will we'll, uh, pay attention to is, ah, she's an Asha. She's manifesting. Yeah. Ashes. You are I, missing what God is God doing. Is doing. Mm -hmm. and, and, not for, and forgetting that this is a human being that God so loves. Good. And this human being has come to, imagine there was no church that they are criticizing. You understand? Yes. Imagine there was no anointing. The same anointing they are criticizing. You, you know, you, anyway, so, we're we so not so I, 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 I needed to, I want to say this, because some people have always asked this question. They say, oh, look at the number of prophets, the number of coming from Nigeria and in Nigeria. And when they said that, I had a thought, and I was thinking about it. I said, but look at the Bible. Some of the greatest prophets were there yeah. when Israel was going down. down. In fact, when King David was there, probably the strongest king Israel yeah. ever had, and Solomon, they were not really strong prophets, because yeah. Samuel had died. But in terms of Elijah, Elisha, down to the red likes of uh, Malachi and the rest, Israel was taken to slavery. Even mm. when the Lord Jesus Christ was walking on the earth, yes. they were subject to the Romans. It doesn't mean that our prophets that God has given us cannot help us usher us into a realm of like You are awesome, you are magnificent God. You are pure, you are holy, you are magnificent Father. Father, we praise you. Father, we lift you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we bless you. Makande rebo sikabrade. Riekende rebo kondoraba sekende rebo kotomaha. Rimakande rebo sikabrade. Riande rebo kondoma hande rebo toya. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our jobs that we have. We thank you for provision. We thank you that we are still standing. We are in the end of November. Father, we thank you that we are still standing. We are still able.
to call unto your name. We are still able to worship you. We are still here. Oh my God. Ma kandere wo sika brate kandere wo kondo maha. Riba kate wo sika brate. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, King of Glory. We worship you, Master Jesus. We worship you, magnificent God. There is nobody compared to you. There is no one like unto thee. You are awesome in our ways. You are awesome, O oh God. Your mercies are you every morning. Oh my God, they are sufficient for us. They are sufficient, O oh God. Your grace is sufficient for us. Your love endured forever for us. We worship you, my God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be lifted. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be magnified. We praise you, King of Glory. We praise you, Alpha and Omega. We praise you, Beginning and the End. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Author and the Finisher of our faith. We praise you, Detector of Heaven. We praise you, Detector of Earth. You are our God. There is nobody like you. There is no one like you. You are the rock of ages. We worship you, my God. We worship you, King of Glory. We lift your magnificent name. We lift you, King of Kings. We worship you. We worship you. We adore you. We praise your name. We magnify you. We bless your name. We magnify you. Oh my God, my Father. We are standing up. We are victorious because of you. We are my God. We have what we have. All because of you. My God, my Father. Everything you created for your God. Oh my God. We worship your King of Glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Numbers chapter 24, verse 7, it says, He shall pour the water out of his bucket, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Amen. Amen. Christ Ambassador's church shall pour water with a bucket, and his seed shall be upon many waters. Amen. I want you to declare this night and say, as I pour my water, with a small bucket, my seed shall be upon many waters. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and I decree as I pour my water, as I pour my, uh, my water with a small bucket, uh, my seed shall be upon many waters. My seed shall be upon the world. Uh, my seed shall be upon the world. My, oh my God, uh, I shall be up above Hakak, oh my God. Uh, oh, the kingdom of God uh, shall be exalted in Christ Ambassador Church. Uh, oh my God, my Father. Uh, I declare and I decree my God, uh, oh my seed uh, shall spread uh, from Kempton Park uh, to Johannesburg, uh, upon South Africa, upon Mozambique, uh, upon Botswana, uh, upon Africa, uh, upon all the continents uh, of this world. Uh, my seed, uh, oh my God, uh, shall be born, uh, shall be upon uh, all the earth, uh, all the seed of Christ Ambassador's Church uh, shall spread uh, in the mighty in the name of Jesus, Lord my God, I declare and I decree, oh my God, I shall not end small, I shall not end small, I will end, oh God, with my seed, oh spread it all upon the surface of the earth, oh my God, 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 Christ Ambassador's Church shall 
be announced out around the world out. Christ and Barcelona's church out. The seed of Christ and Barcelona's church out shall be upon the face out of the earth out. I declare and I declare out. Oh my God, my Father. Ayakatamaha. Rokotora vasikamane. Rekendela vasikamane. Rokotomaha. Rivokondola vasikamane. Rasekendela vokotoya. Ayatamala vatea. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. He said the kingdom of God shall be exalted. Amen. I want you to declare, to open your mouth uh, and begin to declare and say, let the kingdom of God uh, be exalted uh, in Christ Ambassador's church. Uh, open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, Lord my God, uh, let your kingdom uh, be exalted among us, uh, oh God. Uh, let your kingdom uh, be exalted in our midst. Uh, let your kingdom uh, be exalted in Christ Ambassador's church. Uh, let your kingdom, oh God, oh my Kate Maravate, Roko Toramasi Cabrade, Rimandele Mosokon. Doramate, Riva Katara Mokoria, Rasa Katamaha, Rasi Cabrade, Roko Tomaramate, let your kingdom of God be exalted. Oh my God, my Father, upon all Christ Ambassador's church, upon this commission, upon our lives. Oh my God, my Father, let your kingdom be exalted. Oh God, Father, we thank you. We thank you this night. We thank you for your kingdom uh, that will be exalted uh, in our midst uh, in Jesus mighty name amen we are still praying hallelujah amen I want you to open your mouth this night and say Lord this night uh, as your word comes uh, let it fall in a fertile ground uh, let it fall in my heart uh, Open up your spirit. Uh, let the word of God uh, fall in a fertile ground. Uh, let the word of God uh, not uh, let the word of God uh, begin to do something uh, in your life. Uh, let it not return void uh, without accomplishing uh, what it has been sent for this night. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord our God, uh, oh my God, my Father, we open our spirit, uh, we open our hearts. Uh, we open our minds, uh, we open our soul. Uh, Lord my God, uh, let your word fall uh, in a fertile ground. Uh, let your word begin uh, to do its work uh, in our lives, oh God. Uh, oh my Father, my God, uh, this night, oh God, uh, let my heart, oh God, uh, be a fertile ground. Uh, let my spirit, oh God, uh, be a fertile ground uh, to receive, oh God, uh, from you, oh God, uh, every seed uh, that will fall in this ground, oh God, oh my God, let it terminate in my life, in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah, amen, we are still praying, I want you to pray for the servant of God, say these words, Father, use him as a vessel of honor, use him for my case, use him for my situation, open your mouth and begin to pray for him. Heavenly Father, we lift your servant before you this night, O God. Anoint his lips, anoint his face, anoint his hands, anoint his body. Use him as a vessel of honor. Use him for my situation. Use him for my case. Lord, my God, anoint him, O God, not only for me, but for all those people that are on TV land. Lord, my Father, as they hear the word, my Father, my God, let the word transform their lives. Let the word change their situation. Let the word do something, O God. Oh, my Father, my God, we lift him before your throne. We lift him before for your presence. Use him as a vessel of honor. Use him to transform our lives. Use him to change our story. Use him, oh God, as a vessel of honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my God, oh my Father, my God, use him to change our stories. Use him to transform our lives. Use him to take us from one degree or to the other, from one level to the other, in the mighty name of Jesus, all for the glory of your name, in Jesus' mighty name. 
somebody scream, somebody shout, oh, a shout of victory. Somebody shout, a shout of victory. Somebody scream, a scream of victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us go unto the house of the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is not by might. It is not by power. It is by the Spirit. Hallelujah. All other gods, they are the works of men. But we serve a mighty God. And there is none like him. All other gods, they are the works of men, but we serve a mighty God, and there is none like him, Jehovah, you are the most. Let me hear your voice. Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high. Nobody higher than you. You are the most high. Yes, you are. You are the most high. Jehovah. Oh, wow. 
You are the most high God. Yes, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. That's why we praise you, God. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. We say, Lord, you are so good. Your mercy is forever. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Lord, you are good. See you dance for the love. Come on, come on, dance. If he's been good to you, put those hands together. Come on. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on.
worship you, God. Here I am to worship you. Here I am to bow. Here I am to say, you're my God. You're all together, love. Lift up your voice. All together, worthy. All together, wonderful to me. Let me hear just the voices.
<laughs> Why are you not uh, reacting to my love? For God is love. In him there is no bitterness. God is love. Hallelujah. Please be seated. This night I'm going to be um, teaching a message. Please, the message I'm about to teach this night, please do not think it's for your brother. Amen? Because there are times you come to a church and you hear the pastor preaching and you say, I wish Elizabeth was here. You know, this message, you should have had, oh, you should have had this message. Amen? It happens, right? You sit in the church and you feel the message is for your friend, your uncle, your auntie, or your brother. But I want you to understand that this message is for us. Hallelujah. I, I was thinking of meditating this uh, afternoon just on my own. So I'm going to be speaking on the subject friends and people. Friends and what? Friends and people. I, I sat down and I began to meditate on how many friends I've lost, how many friends I still have, why did I lose them, why am I not here with my friends. And now listen to me, friendship is an ordained a relationship from God. Am I talking about Friendship is an ordained relationship by God. And I will share with you the reasons why God wants us to have friends. Why God wants us to have friends. Some of you might be saying, what kind of message is this? But again, like I said, friendship is ordained by God. Some years ago, God started speaking to me about this subject, and I think I preached it when I started the ministry early. I preached this message, and it has been a guiding light to me, even in my work with God and my work with humans. So I'm going to be speaking on friendship and what? People and... Friends and people. Friends and people. The book of Job, chapter 19. The book of Job, chapter 19. Again, like I said, this message is not for your friend. This message is for, for you. Do not wish your friends were here to listen to this message. Be happy that you are here to hear this message and apply it to yourself. And I'm going to dabble on a lot of things. I will take me about one hour. But I'm going to dabble on a lot of things. Some of you, I will set you free. Some of you will be happy. Some of you will be sad. And some of you will have an understanding, which is very important. We'll have what? An understanding. The book of Job, chapter 19, from verse 14. Can I have it on my screen? Job 19. My king foes have... I can't see. Please, do you re can you reduce this? It's too bogus, so I'm losing the words. Can they hear me? My king foes have failed and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in my house and my mates count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant and he gave me no answer. <laughs> I entreated him with my mouth. I appealed to him with my mouth. My breath is strength to my wife. Though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body. Yea, young children despise me. I arose and they spoke against me. All my inward friends abhor me. They hate me. 
and they whom I love I turned against me. If you are here, you have a friend that has disappointed you, just wave at me. Come on, don't lie, we're in church. If you are here and there's a friend you have disappointed, wave at me. Yeah. <laughs> this little girl held the hand of her sister and started waving it. Glory to God. So please hear what I'm about to say this night. It makes like friendship is ordained by God. And some of us have been very rude, have been very unkind to the people that we've called friends. And some friends have been rude and unkind to us. The will of God is for us to maintain friendship. I will end by showing you the reason why you need a friend. Is that okay? No man is an island. No man grows on his own. Friends are a necessity. Now, there are basically, I had a friend say this today, I had somebody say that friends are divided, but I'll give you my own definition, that friends are divided into three levels. The first is the leaf, the leaf kind of friend. You know the leaf on a tree. The leaf kind of a friend is the kind of friend when the wind blows the tree. <laughs> Amen. When the wind blows the tree, you will see that it's the tree, the leaves that are supposed to be stuck to a tree, stuck to a ministry, stuck to a family, stuck to a friendship, the leaf just blows. Those leaf, the wind just blows, the leaves begin to fall. There are friends like that. They just begin to fall. Now, the second level is the branch. The branch of a tree. You find out that the branch of a tree hardly breaks away. Now, there are some friends that come and they are like the branch of a tree. They stay there. They hang in there. They hang in there until... A stronger wind comes. And you see the branch of those trees begin to break. And they begin to fall by the wayside. Now the third level is what we call the roots. So our desire and our prayer that God will send us root friends. And most times, those root friends are not very visible. Amen? They are not very visible, but they are grounded in the ground. They are rooted and they are connected to the tree. The tree is dependent on them to stand. Hello, somebody say I'm here. Somebody say I'm here. Some years ago, the Lord spoke to me when I wanted to get into ministry and he said this to me. He said, Ida Peter Said. You know, I, as a pastor of this church, I've been here from the beginning. I'm the only one that has not left. <laughs> Amen. Really. I'm the only one that I've not left. I have seen some, some people come and they, they, they come to the church to find out whether we are still here. <laughs> whether we are still here. There's somebody that says, hey, you know, I'm feeling bad. If I come to the church, what will people say? I say, they won't know you. <laughs> they will not know you. You were here nine years ago. You were here ten years ago. So many times they come and they can't stay because... They, 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 they don't know them anymore. You see, a person that maybe started the ministry early with us, he's been here for 14 years and left, and has left five years or six years ago, and he walks into the, into the church and sees an usher, and usher is not greeting the person very well, and usher takes you to, nobody you expect the usher to recognize you, and say, ah, you are here, but this usher doesn't know you. 
He came four years ago. You left five years ago. And the person is more grounded. He says, sit here. He says, why are you my city here? He says, who are you? <laughs> so many now want people to recognize them. The pastor to say they are here and nobody recognizes them. They feel uncomfortable and they don't return. It's true. Now, so the Lord spoke to me to help me in ministry, which I'm about to do to you, for you. So he said this, son, if you must survive, people come to you for three reasons. Or friendship comes to you for three reasons. And I've thought this some years ago. I'm just trying to, the Lord just put that in my heart to speak. Number one, people come to you for a reason. For a what? For a reason. I've always said, the reason why I know I will be strong in ministry, any woman that begins to tell me that she loves me now, knowing that I have a wife, is here for a reason. Amen. And I was sharing this afternoon. I said, one of the, 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 the men that shocked me in the Bible is a man called Samson. Samson professes love to a woman. And the Bible says that when they wanted to kill Samson, the woman came to Samson and said, show me the secret of your power. So it was obvious why the woman came. The woman did not come for love. So, so many people do not come because they love you or because they want you. There is a reason. Maybe you, you have figure eight or maybe the man drives a BMW. Something just motivates people and pulls them to you. A man like Samson, a woman comes to Samson and says, uh, show me the strength, the source of your power. Do you love me or the source of the power? Is it me that you love or the power? So I beg men and some women that are beginning to rise in stardom and beginning to rise in money. God is beginning to bless you. Don't be confused. When you did not have anything, they were not calling you brother. When you were broke in the location, nobody was greeting you and showing you this kind of love. Am I talking to somebody? It's a shame that somebody can start with a woman. Woman has three kids and four kids for her, and you profess love for this woman. After some few years, you, all of a sudden, this person is not good enough for you. Now you, you can buy a house. You, you have two cars. You, you can wear designer's clothes, and you forget. Hey, you tell me you love me now. You didn't love me since. Now you see me on TV. You see the church. What are you looking for? You want to be first lady? Or what? Am I talking to somebody? So I'm preaching this message because I'm going to show you a balance. We must be careful. That what we call friendship, most people that come to us, that they want to be friends with us are not really coming there because of friendship. They come because there's a reason. So he warned me that people will come to you for a reason. For a what? For a reason. I've seen them. On Sunday here will be full. They're coming for bread. They're coming for miracle. They know I will not be shouting fire every fire. Your uncle, your auntie died. They're not here. Hallelujah. They're not here. So people come to you for what? Come on, talk to me. I'm in the class this night. People come to you for what? For a reason. I've always told young girls when men run around you, they want one thing, sex. If it is not sex, give me a ring. If it is not sex, ne? give me a ring. I, I want a ring. I want to be married. I am 29. I'm 31, 32. No, give me a ring. You know I want a ring. If you love me, give me the ring. When I ask them to give me the ring, they run. Because they are coming for a different reason. I know a young man that told me, hey, me I must look for a woman in the church. Oh. 
if I must marry, it must be in the church. I say, why? He said, when I'm busy drinking beer, walking out, I know she will not go and drink beer. She'll be staying in the house. If I go and marry a girl from the club, all these girls that are working with me like this, if I drink, they drink. If I move, they move. He said, but you're not coming. He said, no, that's my only reason. I know that my wife will be at home when I'm moving. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? They, he said, no, I must marry a born again. I said, but he said, born again. Then my children, my house, my home is safe. When I carry woman, she will not carry man. When I move, she will not move. <laughs> is that not true? Uh -huh. For a reason. The second reason they come, they said they come for a reason, and they come for a season. They come for what? A season. You see friends that come to you for a reason. Some will come for a season. Now, the seasonal people, again, God give, give me grace in this church. Yes, if you're not here as a pastor before I was crazy, radical, I can call you, how are you? What are you doing? Once I hear you say you are leaving, I never come after you. I know I'm a shepherd, but I could come because you might be going through issues, might be going through problems. But if I hear you say, I will never, I delete you. <laughs> because naturally, people will come into your life for a season. Now hear me, young girls, I'm going to get into your own case. It is not every man that says good morning wants to marry you. Hallelujah. Some men can be friends. Okay, people don't want to hear that. If a brother greets you in church, you, when you come the next morning, you, you are looking for where he's sitting. When you want to walk past, it's only by his side you, 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 you want to walk past. No. God, most times, will bring some people for a reason, some for a season. Now hear this. When the people that are supposed to be in Christ Ambassador's Church, in your life, in your family, when their season is over, they will go. The disciples of Jesus was fighting him. He said, I must go. They said, go where? He said, no, my, my job here is over. I must go. If I don't go, he will not come. So this night, you must understand that there are people that left you. They did not leave you because they needed to leave you or they wanted to leave you. They left you because their season in your life was over. Ooh. People want to... Remember their boyfriend of 1972. That season is over. Once that season is over, it is over. Let it go. Don't pull the season that is over into the present. Some of you are still bitter. Some of you are still hot. Some of you are still thinking, why did he die? Even in death, his season is over. God, why did you kill him? Who would die? <laughs> Death is an appointment. Amen? If it is seven years, he's dead, dead. If the person dies in ten years, gone. If he dies when he's 41, he's gone. His time has come and has gone. I, that's why the, 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 I get angry when I see people carry ash. Or they carry it in and go to grave. And go and sit. That they were burying that young man. And we saw one girl sitting on the grave with flower, talking. <laughs> I looked at her with my spiritual eye. I said, let me mind my business. This thing is pushing me. And I said, hey, get up. Come on, go home. What are you coming to the grave to do? 
is the person there. If we open that grave, let me see how you will stay there. When you see the maggot and the cockroaches that were coming out, Hallelujah. So people come for a reason. They come for what? A season. Then they come for a lifetime. They come for what? The people that come for a lifetime, you might not see them with your physical eyes, but they are still connected to you. Because God connects them. And most times the importance of family is that your family is the one that is supposed to be there for a lifetime. Sometimes we carry radicals and rascals and move them and bring them into family. When they leave, you cry blood because you are not supposed to bring them. The reason why you are not supposed to bring them is because in every relationship, I'm jumping from here to here, in every relationship there are three dimensions. I'm teaching, eh? In every relationship, there are how many dimensions? Come and talk to me, church. Come and talk to me, church. There are three dimensions in every relationship. The first dimension of a relationship is what we call the outer court dimension. The what? The outer court dimension. Those outer court dimension are friends or relation or people that are supposed to be just there. Do you know there are people in this church that you're your friends, you don't know their names? <laughs> eh? Even in this our church, they are your friends, you don't know your name because when you can even gist with them. Yeah. Hey, Baba, how are you? Hey, I didn't see you last week. Now, hey, how are you? Am I talking? They are called what? Outer court dimension. The outer court dimension, you don't tell them everything. They don't even know where you're living. We call them meet and greet. We call them what? Meet and greet. <laughs> I'm helping somebody this night. Meet and meet and greet. If you see them in a the mall, hey, hey, brother, how are you? Where are you going? No, I came from Fushini. From Fushini. Ah, uh, any nice city for you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Baba. Okay, I'll see you in church, ne? I'll see you in church. God bless you. God bless you. It is well. Meet and greet. These are meet and greet people. The problem with most people is that when God sends you a meet and greet people, you take them serious. <laughs> you take them too serious. But they are supposed to be meet and greet. Sissy, I need somebody to talk to. That's meet and greet. What my husband is doing to me, I just needed somebody to talk to. I need somebody to share. Meet and greet, you say, yeah. 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 In meet and greet heart, meet and greet is saying, eh, I thought this one was better than me. <laughs> I thought everything was okay in the life of this one. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> they are meet and greet, but all of a sudden, you are, as you are crying, they say, hey, should I cry, or should I cry with them, or should I not cry, or should I? They don't know you. Some of you, a young man says, hello, I've been seeing the church, can I have your phone number? He said, brother, you give. You give. He said, I will call you now. Okay. You go, hey, I met one brother in church today. Oh, you, 
Our Father has finally answered my prayer. Jesus, Jesus has answered me. Oh, I was praying for a man like this, like that. Then you even maybe go and peep what meet and greet is driving. Hey, if you see the BMW, the one with the eyes like this. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? But these are meet and greet people. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says you should not give newcomers or new converts position in the church. So why do we blame them when you hear that a choir person is smoking cigarettes? That choir is meet and greet, brother. Like the young man would say he can sing. One choir person will just fall in love. I've seen somebody in the spirit with me. Both of us will change the nations together. Amen. And the young man comes and says, sir, he's seen the pastor behind I have a, I have a problem. I'm a rapist. I, I'm not saying he said, though. I'm just saying, hey, I have a problem. Hey, I'm on drugs. I'm on alcohol. I'm on, I'm just praying. I lost my way. Help me to find my way. Help me. He's begging for help. You, you are falling in love <laughs> with meet and greet. The next time when you say, hi, I sing in the choir. Oh, God, your voice is glorious. Two of us, we will touch the nations. You're already combining yourself with him. Meet and greet. You say, hey, this, is, this one is pepper soup now. This one is something I can use for myself. That's how he's thinking. He's not saved. He's not at the same level with you. He's planning how to consume you with, with fire. I don't want to put Holy Ghost. Am I talking to somebody this night? Number two, outer court, then you have the inner court. Dimensions of friendship. You have the inner court. The inner court people are now people that you begin to know closely. Like in the church like this, let's look for, like example in the choir now, there are, there are about how many people do you have in the choir? Almost 30, but we see like 12. Amen. Okay. In that choir, you have now people that have moved from the outer court to the inner court. They have formed association. But because they have formed association, does not make all of them the same. They are still in the inner court. That is why you see somebody in the group, he's in the same group, choir group, ushering group, pastoring group, this kind of group, and when you post something that he doesn't like, you will see his true color. You are bringing him closer, but you don't know him. Now, this is where most women make mistakes. That a brother you think he's saved, you now bring him to your inner court, immediately you bring him to your inner court, he sleeps with you. And after a while, you say, he broke my heart. Which heart? The problem is that from the outer court to the inner court is where people play. They play. You play with me, I play with you. Nothing serious there. And all of a sudden, you will hear a young man say, this sister, I thought she was a Christian. No. The truth about it is that you have already moved yourself from the outer court to the inner court and you are going deeper when the sister or the brother still looks at you as a person from the outer court. <laughs> Hallelujah. He looks at you as a person from the outer court. You, you are now putting yourself to him. But it's like, this friendship is going we are, uh, too much. No, I can't. Uh, this one. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? So it's a big mistake. 
So there are young men like, 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 like that. They come to church. You see them as, they've been here three weeks and four weeks and five weeks. You fall in love. Before you know, I have found him. My missing ripper. The truth about it is he has not found you. No, no. Amen. Amen. He has not found you. You are speaking in tongues. You are honest. You are of God. You love God. But the person you are playing with, he's not playing at the same level with you. Am I talking to somebody? He sleeps with you and it's a game. And you are crying. He's wondering, ah, but you did it. I did it with you now. You enjoyed it. I enjoy it. What is? Why are you breaking my, which heart? No, my own heart is somewhere. No. I'm telling you about people and friends or friends and people. Hallelujah. In that outer court or inner court, you begin now to know people. You begin to understand them. That is why I say you don't give them the cookie. You don't give them the what? The cookie to eat. You don't give them. I've always told people, and I'm not afraid to talk. You know, I preach the way I preach. Amen. Now we have the holies of holies. When God made the, the woman's private parts, when we were small, I hope they are not children too much. When we were small, we thought the private part was like here. Just somewhere here. Until when we started going deeper, we found out that God hid it somewhere. <laughs> Only a person in the inner court is allowed to go and find it. <laughs> Sure. <clears throat> Somebody say amen. Are you still here? It is, it is not right to give it to everybody, to give your everything to everybody until you know. That is why diaries and payment is, is the most important thing in relationship. If you want it, you pay. You pay deposit. That's what we're talking about. We are moving from, uh, uh, hello somebody. <laughs> but we need to help people. We need to help people jump into friendships that are unnecessary. So there are people that call me, my friend, you know, this pastor is my friend, what he did to me. I say, don't mind them all. I'm not that person's friend. No, 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 I'm not your friend. I met somebody, I won't mention his name. You know? So when I came back, my wife asked, I said, I met this pastor. He used to be with us. So my wife said, did you stop, did you greet him? I said, for what? He's not my friend. Is he my friend? What am I discussing with him? He's not my wave the high outer friend. Outer cry. Wave that thing. He said, You wave. I say, It's not my friend. But it's my friend. I will visit him. He'll visit me. We'll be talking. I've not seen him for one, two years, three years. I just saw him. Hi, how are you? You are here. That's how it is. You're not my friend. I'm sorry to say. So my heart is not broken. Because the person is not in my inner court. The Bible says, if they are for us, they will stay. You can, like I said, when a man walks into your inner court, even when he leaves, you know that there is a connection. If your father travels and lives in Japan, is he still not your father? Eh? You might not be seeing him or your elder sister or your elder brother. You are still connected. So there are friendships that walks into that level. That the person calls you son, you say father. father. That distance is not a barrier. Yes. 
That's what we're talking about. How do you test friendship? Let me show you the real test of friendship. For you to know the real test of friendship, seven or six things, I'm rushing and running here. For you to know the real test of friendship, if this friendship is real, if your friendship is of God, if your friendship is really, 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 friendship. Am I teaching well? Some of you are not happy with me this night. I'm your father. I can't talk like this. Amen. <laughs> the test of friendship number one problem. What? You're not laughing, smiling, and you're speaking in front. You're not smiling with me. You're listening. The test of friendship is what? Problem. If you know if a man is in your inner court, fall into trouble. <laughs> then you will know whether it's outer court. Outer court will take off before. I don't know him more. I don't have, I don't know him. Number two. Poverty. I'll read a, two, a scripture or two here. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 20. Please put it up quickly. Proverbs 14, 20. Proverbs 14, 20. Okay, let's read together. One, two, go. The poor is hated, even by his own family. When you are broke, that is when you will see the woman will serve you divorce letter. This lady that said, till death do us perish, till death we will swim, I will be with you until Jesus comes. Lose your job. You are not able, he's not able to buy you iPhone. You, okay, you say, let me even re reduce the phone to techno. <laughs> Tec it's techno phone. Yeah. Techno. You mean you can't buy me even techno? What am I doing here? This is the person that loved you, that said I'm your friend, that said that. Me and my husband were friends. We started off as friends. And you're ending up as what? Oh. Poverty. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 7. I hope I'm right. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 7. Where is my scripture in front here? Okay, let's read together. He's the one begging them for friendship. They don't want. Because of lack and poverty. The real test of friends. I'm not talking about your neighbor. I'm talking about you. Because there are people that things are bad for that you have abandoned. There are people that things are not working out for them. You no longer call them. There are people that you have become better than them. You have forgotten them. I'm not talking about your neighbor. That's why I say when I preach this message, don't say how I wish Juliet was here. You are here. Poverty. How do you know the test of friendship? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28. Proverbs 16, 28. 
Okay, let's read one to go. Scandal. You know, when I came back from, um, from Russia, they had put me in the newspaper. When I first came in, I was peeping from my window the first Sunday. Are they still here? You know, some left when they were accusing me of kidnapping. How many will stay? Papa, Papa. I've seen those Papa, Papa people, though. Papa, my father, my Papa. When they leave, they say, that pastor. That pastor. The way they pronounce it is the way they write it. P-A-S-T-E-R. Pastor. How many people can stick even when there is scandal? When there is gossip against your friend? How many people can still say, even though this person is still my friend? You say, hey, don't go close. Have you heard? Don't associate. People say, I don't know him. Oh. This is what they did to Jesus. Peter the rock. Hmm. Hmm. Peter said, I have not even seen him before. Eh? You have not seen him, Peter. Now they are calling him a criminal and a thief. How many of you have walked out of your friends and walked out of your pastors and walked out of your leaders because of what you had? The trust of friendship. And we are not saying that you should condone evil. But when the man is at the lowest ebb, that's when he needs you most. When a man is broken, when he's down, friends are few. People that love him, Job said, even my daughters, my children, they have run away from me. May that not be us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about how friendships are tested. Well, this is almost the same thing. We call it misfortune. Do you know most people think that your problem will last forever? Eh? We call them fair weather friends. When you are experiencing a misfortune, you say, please, can I just, even if it is 50 rand to eat? He say, 50. Huh. Me, I've not even seen 20 to eat. You are talking of 50. The person has a thousand rand in his pocket. The people that promised you, they will support you. I've always said it in Christ Ambassador Church. When a person comes to introduce himself, say, my papa, you know I'm here for you. You know I'll be here, I'll just say my noswa. <laughs> the members of the church are like the Holy Spirit. They're like what? The Holy Spirit comes like a wind. Ooh. You see them everywhere. They are everywhere. They are serving. They are carrying everywhere. They come, they come like a wind. The Bible says, Samson wills not that the spirit had departed. When the spirit wants to leave you. You see them in a the mall. Then that's when they want to look at clothes, new clothes. You know, me, I see from far. My gift is I can sight you from far. I will see one brother that has left. Once they, maybe I'm coming close. They see me. Once they see me closely, they begin to look at clothes like this. Then I will focus on them. I will not remove my eyes. I'll be waiting. Because they will turn to see now. I will wait, wait, wait. That glitch, once they turn, I'll be like. (laughs) 
<laughs> when you face misfortune, that is when you can sift your friends. You can know how many. I've always told people, if your friends are more than your fingers, you have a problem. The people in your inner court cannot be more than how many? More than five. If you have one husband, three children, there's space for only one. Oh, you're laughing. I'm serious. <laughs> if your family is five, no space. Manage the one you have. Let your son be your best friend, your daughter. Let, let, stay inside. But once you shift to this sound, hey. So we have three now, so I have space for two. One is already there. One of my friends is the one I've been friends with for 30 something years. Other ones are the outer court. You know, inner court. I still have a lot of inner court people. Am I ministering to somebody this night? You must learn. You must learn. You must learn. Okay, okay. Then finally, how do you test? Friendship, growth, growth is what growth. <laughs> so many people will stop being your friend because you have grown. Okay, let's say it in English. Most people will stop being your friend because you are more blessed than them. Amen? Amen. They decide their case by themselves. Hey, I saw one guy, he's not my real, I told you that people are indifferent. So this guy was in my inner court. He said to me, hey, Ida, we don't see you again now. Now you are on TV. Now you have money. We don't see you again. I said, I'm in South Africa. How will I be seeing you? You are in Nigeria. He said, you have money now, now. You have money now. Look at that's the problem. When people have money. Me, I got angry. I said, God did not trust you now. If God trusted you, he would have given you money. But because he didn't trust you. <laughs> since you want to talk to me. But he thought I was his friend, but I'm not his friend. Now, a lot of people misjudge people for that. You complain over people that are not your in, in the inner court. They are, they are in the outer court. So what you're expecting from them, they are not... They can't give you. Have you not seen people you complain? Look at that man, he used to be my friend. No. You have to grade the level of friendship. Then you have peace. Yeah. Once you grade the level of relationship I have with you, then you will have peace. Yeah. Outer court, inner court, holies of holy. The more they are outer, the less expectation. Yeah. Amen. Okay, I'm going to close the reason for friendship, then we close. Please, I want you to learn this. Don't be stressed when people walk out on you or people... No. Calm down. Amen. Don't go and sit in a room and cut yourself. He left me. He would die without him. I told you a story of a, of a wife that was crying by the grave of the husband. I would die with him. This man was my everything. We were married for 12 years. He's dying. He's dead. I'm dying. He's dead. I'm... So one older woman was looking at this girl. You know, when she wants to, you see those old people, when she wants to run to the grave, they will hold her. So this old lady, Gogo, -go, looked at this woman, said, leave her. They said, no. I said, shh, shh, shh. leave her. <laughs> now the grave is open. The coffin is there. So he runs to the, the girl, runs to the grave. I will die. I will die. Then she gets to the grave. 
Why did you leave me? Why did you leave me alone here? Hey, I will, I will miss you. How can I survive? Go now. Do you want to die with <laughs> ah, Nobody will die with you, my friend. Just cry a little and continue your life. That devil is a liar. I will see you by and by. Amen. Okay, the reason for friendship. Comfort, you're getting something today, eh? Beautiful teaching. The reason for friendship, number one, God brings friends to our life to comfort us. To do what? You must write on Wednesdays. Don't sit like this. You will not gain anything. What you write, you say. It's better to write. Wednesday is teaching service. To comfort us. Because God understands that there will be times when we will have problems. Amen. When we have problems. A friend will be there to comfort you. When you are going through your pain. When you are going through issues. That's why family is number one. When something happens in family, you see your family members will run down. They will come around you just to comfort you. Number two. The reason for friendship to encourage you. To do what? To do what? To encourage you. When you are low in spirit, when things are not working the way you want them to work, when things are not functioning the way you expect things to function, your friend will call you up, your friend will visit you. Come on, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Things will improve. Hallelujah. Not a friend that talks about you, discusses you when things are not working for you. Number three, God will send you friends to help you. To what? To help you. If you have a need and a man calls himself his friend and he can help you when you are in need, what is the essence of the friendship? Baba, things are bad. I can't pay my rent this month. You say, sure. You can't pay your rent? Okay, you have some money? Yes, I have a little. No, no, don't worry. I will send some money into your account. I will send some money to help you clear your bill. And he doesn't go and tell people, look at him, I'm the one paying his bills. The people in the outer court will talk about you. You can't be helping somebody and telling everybody you are the one helping them. You're not a friend. You're, you're, you're a criminal. If you know what I did for him, if you know, that's why you're friends. Hallelujah. To help you. The next one, to support you. Now, support can be emotional. Amen? You see when somebody loses, a woman loses her husband, you don't need to talk. Hey, sorry. What our old women do, they just come and sit around. When you want to cry, somebody will get up and follow you. When you want to go to the toilet, somebody, because you can go and kill yourself, the ones that are not stable. So friendship is for support. Friends are supposed to support one another. Amen. You know, I went through a hard time some years ago. It was a terrible time for me. My friend, Prince Will, flew in from Nigeria. I was going through a very bad divorce. Flew in from Nigeria. He wasn't talking. In the night, I couldn't sleep. He would just come and sit by my bedside. After a while, he would just touch me. He stayed with me for eight weeks. About eight weeks. He left his job. For eight weeks, just stayed until I began to recuperate. I began to recover because I was broken. My pride was broken. Everything, and I was pastoring Christ Ambassador's Church. He gave me a shoulder to lean on. He couldn't give me money, I, I, but I, I had more money than him. So I didn't need money. I had enough money 
to, to look after myself. But money was not helping me. I, every time I want to order for food, I couldn't cook. Cook What are you cooking now? Give me pizza. I was eating and blowing. Say, shh. No more pizza. No more McDonald's. Anything you want, I will cook for you. Until I got healed. Until I was ready. Profess the word. I will come and preach on a Sunday. People were here. Some of you were here. I will come and preach. On a Sunday, minister, when I get home, I begin to cry. There are people who are already judging me. People who are, Joe, you were here? Yeah, Joe was in that meeting, that last that meeting we called Joe and, uh, and Luca. So it's a true story. You go through pain, you need people to just support you. That's the, some of you are not supporting your own friends. Your friends are crying. Your friends are in pain. Some of you have become too churchous. You've become too churchous. I'm going for fellowship. I'm going for Bible study. The Bible study, go and do it in her house. Go and read the scripture for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you have lost some nice friends because of Christianity. Oh. Christianity doesn't mean you lose your friends. Maybe two of you, they can come to know Jesus. You don't, have to, you, you don't have to behave like them. But you don't have to kick them out. Yes, I said it. Hallelujah. Finally, friends are there to correct you. <laughs> friends are there to do what? To correct you and shout at you. Are you stupid? Is this man your, why are you taking this man's number? Are you not married? Hey, I will tell your husband. Eh. Who are you to tell me? No, I'm your friend. If you're a friend and you don't look at your friend to his face or her face and say, hey, winner, this is wrong. You can't do this. Who are you to talk to me? Eh? I'm your friend. You look at your friend, eyeball to. If you can't take correction from your friends, then you are miserable. Sit down, let me tell you. This thing you're doing is wrong. Why are you talking to your mother like this? If you continue like this, I will not be your friend. We don't like people that correct them. Hey. The same thing in church. If they correct you, you change us. <laughs> Your friends must correct you. When I say correction, I'm not talking of just correcting. Correct and reprimand. You understand? A father went into his house and saw his son preparing a bomb. He looked at the bomb, looked at the bomb, entered his car, went to police. <laughs> he said, come and arrest my son. Oh. He said, arrest your son. He said, my son will not only die. I don't want him. It's better he's in prison. I know he's there. Because he's going to kill himself and kill a multitude of people. Come and help me and arrest my son. Some of you, you see your daughters wearing micro mini. Your own daughter. You know, but she has a right, a judicial right, and she has a, a right what? Some of you have friends. You see them walk on the street, their bob line, boost line is showing. Say, hey, close. We are ambassadors. We don't dress like this. If you don't want my friendship, I go. But if you want my friendship, I tell you, 
the two. Come on, stand to your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. The world, amen. The world is in a mess because we lack friends, real friends. Friends that can cover you, protect you, support you, encourage you. Friends that can be there for you. We don't have any more. Everybody's an island. You men, you men, you, you are what? Amen? Amen. Yeah. We must be there for one another. Hey, why did Mama Lillian talk to me like that? Yeah? In those days, our mothers in church, hey! This is how they used to hold us. I don't know about now. If you hold it now, they say it's abuse. <laughs> yeah. This is how they hold you to your own mother. They are taking you to your mom. They are holding you like this. Come! Come with me. Then your mother will thank them. After thanking them, they say, we'll see you later. You know that that later. Our neighborhood used to correct one another. Now you correct somebody, it's the mother that will come and shout to you, what, am I, what are you doing, my daughter? My daughter? No, we are, that's why the society is messed up. If you come here, you will be corrected. Oh, we must correct you. We'll put you in line. I hear now they are telling me of some young girls. I don't know whether you think that your group is like you. Are, it's you. I hear people are having one group now that meet outside during service. The day I catch you outside, you will know I'm not just a pastor, I'm a disciplinarian. They are, I hear, I've, they've reported them to me. They, they meet, I saw my little girl the other day there, I want, I said, come on! I stopped my car, I said, inside, now! She caught Holy Ghost fire, fire, Holy Ghost fire caught her. She ran in, I said, if I see you here, this is where this thing, uh, parents, listen, once you bring your child here, you've handed over that child to me, oh. I want you to know, once you, you walk that child inside, I take over. Mm, I take over. If you can't help them, we help them here. Please, there's still hope for this nation. There's hope for families. Amen? There's hope for the society. That's the essence of why we must be there one for another. Correct your sister in law. Help them, encourage them, and strengthen them. May God give you wisdom. Amen. Father, this night we thank you for your word. For your word is true. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Bless your word. May we not just be hearers of this word. May we be doers too. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. Offering time. Father, we bless the offerings that we give. Sanctify it in Jesus' name. We, we have a conference in Z Z um, Namibia next week. The church services continue. I'm going to be back before Sunday. Please, I don't want anybody to tell you I will not be here. I'll be here for the service. Um, and we want everybody. Next week, Sunday here. Next week, uh, uh, next, on the 12th, we're going to have a special service. It is a not my head, not my blood service. On the 12th of December, it's going to be a great service, and um, it's the advert will soon be up. We want to push, and the devil cannot kill anybody, and the devil must return our blessings. It is not over until God says it is over. I'm going to be continuing part three of my teaching on what? On the strong man. This Sunday, because it's the last Sunday of the month, we're going to have the water. I know we will have the water. And I want us to share testimonies. Don't secretly share your testimony. We're hearing testimonies through emails, through WhatsApps of the grace of the water, the water of sweetness. Um, hopefully this Sunday we will take testimonies. Please share to encourage others 
of what God is doing with the, uh, with the, sweet, with the sweet water. Amen. Now, um, we're going, uh, we wanted to speak to Sister Lillian about this. What the Lord is putting in my heart, I want word. We pray that every word that you've spoken, we will use the word to our benefit. Those of us that have neglected our friends, our families, please put love back in our hearts for us to be a blessing to them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Saturday for morning prayer. Amen.